go back in time, and let me tell you where I'm going with this. That the bricklayer that did the first set, I I, I like the way his brick looks, except for the exception that it's just cold joints. Nothing uh, tying to the existing structure. It's like, hey, I got paid to do right up to here, and that's it. That creates a problem with the existing structure also, because it's no interlocking going on. They're not using, he didn't, this engineer, this... Uh, engineer here select structural did not detail how to tie the two the two bricks together one if you're going to butt it like that how how to do that there's a heel coil that sets back in there you route it out you set it back in there you tuck point it in of course these bricks are kind of sucky but I, we're going to work our way up to it the other thing i'm going to talk about is that hit the brick layer I think he's taking a victory lap, saying that his crew said the wall's bulging and falling. That's probably more, uh, you know, maybe it was a home run, but it's probably more a uh, jealousy thing of them making the phone call. Because um, he, he wasn't specific about it, and he went out of his way. So the worker called him, and he wasn't he, he didn't see it personally himself. So he's using his, his third person to make the phone call. Okay. So with that said, that if that's the bricklayer, the first one, you know, that's the if. Remember, this guy deviated from the block schedule. So I want you to keep that in mind. I already gave away my damn Columbo hint shit. I meant to go to the image and say, what's this? What's the, you know, play stupid. And then, uh, well... Maybe some of you will forget and we'll play stupid again and you won't catch on. But let, let's just cut to the chase then. So he was supposed to use a larger block, not six inch blocks. Six inch blocks, guys, you cannot, you don't core fill them. You don't solid fill six inch block. All right, there, there, there's nothing really there to do that. And therefore, you're not adding rebar. So let's look at the details requirement after this February 2nd um, to whom it may concern. Now, this was obviously to the city. And the whole the whole part that they want to get to is the uh, an evaluation of the lockout of the building is not necessary at this time. An evacuation or a lockout of the building is not necessary at this time. All right. Well, he got away with that one. It, it didn't co it didn't collapse right then. But there was deviation and and uh, what the first guy taking a victory lap, the, the brick guy, doesn't deserve a victory lap. All right, he wasn't licensed either, which the uh, the lady who resigned was trying to get him licensed. He, so he did this work um, knowing that he's not licensed in the municipality. He's a contractor. You know you got to get licensed uh, at, the, at, these, at the different uh, municipalities you work in or inquire about licensing. All right, so you tell me, does he deserve a victory lap, a slap on the back, or was he trying to be, you know, not come up with that $25,000 bond? It took some time. He didn't just do it that, that same day and, and resolve that the permit issue that he did not have a license. So let's look at this. To him a concern, an emergency site visit. That's emergency site visit was performed at the property on February 2nd. This is dated February 2nd. He makes his evaluation the same day. I don't know when this was sent in, but he looks at the structure and makes his evaluation the same day. That is, um, you know, pretty, pretty, pretty aggressive uh, with what he states down below, I think. Watch. The building is a six-story brick steel structure. Brick steel structure. There is commercial space at the street level and resident you have residential units above. Okay. There is a concern of the west exterior wall. That's the wall that collapsed. Where a, lo where a localized area of brick is cracked and crumbling. Localized area is cracked and crumbling. An engineer was requested to determine whether it is imminent threat to the building or, smaller, or a smaller concern. Okay. The storage and maintenance... Okay, so the storage... Is a, there is a storage and maintenance room on the west side of the building. It's storage. In which the damaged brick can be seen. So from inside. 
The main area of the brick damage is roughly 8 feet wide and occurs directly below a beam, which is, wow. The damage occurs directly below a beam, which supports the second level. So he just said the damage area is below a beam that supports the second level. So this would be a beam. And this is brick. And we've got an area that's um, 8 by... The damage brick is 8 feet wide by 4 feet high. So I'm just going to do 4, right? And we'll do 8. And these are feet. Okay, reading on. Uh, it is unclear. Okay, this right part right there is critical. He states that it is unclear. Meaning unclear to him. It is unclear whether it bears on the brick wall directly or rather on a steel column encased in brick. So he is unclear whether it's loading... It's loading... Um, this will be the... Um, the... the Steel column encased in brick. So it's unclear whether this beam is loading down this steel column or the, or the brick. Well, here's the steel beam. How is it unclear? You know, the, he didn't expose that? Or does he think they just put steel up there and came that close and just said, ah, you know what, it's okay, just wrap some mud around that uh, steel there and let's call it a day, let's go ahead and leave. I mean, it, it, it's it's clear to me, but it's also clear to me that there's some temporary shoring back here also that went up. It's on the surface. Very interesting. It changes the low path. Now, the uh, let's go back to it is unclear. It is unclear whether it bears, the, bears on the brick wall directly or rather on a steel column in, encased in brick. So here's the, let's do a side profile. So here's the steel. And then here's the column, let's say the steel column. And then the brick are on the outside. So here's the brick. So there we go. So it's unclear to him whether this, this steel, that one I showed you here, the steel, this one, rests on the column or the brick. <clears throat> One of the things you can do again is tap it, ring it, ding, to see if it's, uh, if we're looking at settlement as far as, is that, does he know something we don't know, that this thing doesn't have a, doesn't have a footer perhaps, that it's sitting on dirt, you know, is he not, is he leaving out something about the, the, we, the connections here, I mean, that would be critical to know, but reading on, it's unclear whether it, bear, whether it bears, on the brick wall directly, or rather on the steel column encased in brick. No, but we see it open, right? So this would be encased in brick. That would be this one that he's referencing. But you saw what the other one looked like below, here. And this is not mentioned. This is mentioned. This is ignored in his report. Okay, ignored as far as I can tell. Let's read on. Maybe I'll have to take it back in the next report. Another small encased beam is parallel, roughly 8 feet to the north. The bottom face faces of the beams are roughly 15 inches high. 15 inches high. The bottom faces are roughly... And so, the bottom face is roughly 15 inches, 15 feet high. Sorry. The elevation, right? The bottom face of the beams are roughly 15 foot high. Uh, the bottom face of the beams elevation are roughly 15 feet high. Um, bottom face and the uh, bottom of it, yeah. So the bottom flange. All right, determined trying to figure out what it is. What is he telling me? It's this. It's this. Okay, flange. Box beam. What? You know, be a little more, a little more special. I'm having a little fun with my words. A little more specificity. All right. All right. Specifying. Both beams need to be shored. So he, he requires demands. Both they need to be shored. With heavy posts so that the permanent repairs can be applied. The permanent repairs will likely involve the replacement of the wall in this area. 
So the permanent repair is saying the wall is structurally unsound, or it's, you know you're going to replace it. The on-site building maintenance team confirmed that the ductwork in this in this workplace along the west wall is abandoned, and therefore may be removed. This will allow access to the wall and beams above. The main takeaway from the inspection is that the damage there is not an imminent danger to the entire building and its residents. An evacuation or lockout of the building is not necessary at this time. The damage will be addressed and repaired. The two beams mentioned shall be shored soon. So why do they have to be shored soon? Because he doesn't know the load path of them. He doesn't know the measurements of them, the thickness, the wall thickness. You know, does it look like it's buckling or not? He doesn't know the load path of the structure. But yet he's going to shore up these beams anyway. <clears throat> Um, and it says, and why? Out of abundance of caution. So he's saying he's just being cautionary or supporting it. Because he doesn't know, what, remember, if it's brick or it's the column. And if that's the case, why doesn't he have them expose, reveal the base? Well, because time is of the essence. He was, it was uh, emergency site visit right here to stop the building from being condemned. Time is of the essence, and this is what it, the report is looking like. The two beams shall be uh, shored out of abundance of caution, but with this shoring, but with this shoring in place, the structure will be secure for the permanent, long-term repairs to take place. Another report detailing these repairs will follow at a later date, which I'm going to get to. The opinions and recommendation of this report are based on field measurements, which we saw none. And observable conditions, which he st t states, it is not an assessment of the non-structural elements of the or the local building code, or an in-depth analysis of every member of the structure. Should conditions change or new information, I'm going to read it to you, before it become available, the engineer reserves the right to amend the recommendations. All right, so any changes, he's going to reserve the right to change. But right now, he's saying that. There is no time, but there is a date. There is a date, February 2nd stamp. Again, February state, emergency site visit, performed on the property on that date. Okay. And so now we see the wall. The one to the left, he doesn't know whether it's brick encased column, but yet he's stating there's one there. Brick encased is what he's thinking. Looking to the right... Um, now remember, this was inside wall. This will be the structural wall. And what do they do? They put, they made a, con a control joint here, separation by putting a column here. The original the original duck guy did it, um, or is this so it comes later? I will tell you. In, in one of the repairs, I see what appears to be or maybe right about there, a weld that they welded two pipes together. Timeline wise, we see some paint on this one. It looks like it steps here, like it's it's like a pipe inside a pipe or the well. Let's see the well like that. And then there's the steel um, being pressed against the uh, maybe the one of the rental units. Um, they're down below, so this would be the second floor rental unit. The not the commercial unit is in line with the floor we're on now, I believe. Looking at the brick, since we have the opportunity, and this is what he would have seen, we see no load path here. That this, this, this is what he saw. Is it's broken? All right, it's fractured. There's no load path there. Let's, this is what he saw that day. Looking at the left, we see some very, very uh, a mixture of brick. Right, a little, little, little mixture of brick. We see some parging that might have been on there, fully parged at one time and no longer. We see some uh, load paths that are void of uh, load path. There are spaces that, 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 that alter the load path. <clears throat> we see that new block wall went in block wall went in here, and we don't see the continuation and tie in from this wall to this wall around that steel in some capacity. Let me show you this uh, this coil. 
So you look up, once you guys, you can look them up, Halifax tile, uh, brick ties. And um, let's see if we can get a, a, oh, images. Let's do images. And they'll go from left to right. They're, they're, they work in tension. You see this kind of spiral shape. Uh, let's see if they got an image of them actually on a wall. I'll also show you that that other guy didn't. Okay, to the left. Okay, to the left you have the, uh, this is the uh, the fracture, and then this gets embedded. Uh, you route it out, clean it out, and you embed it. All right, you can embed it. You can, you can see it can be tied back. Um, and it's using a routing tool to make it easy for himself. You can see that the end, how it's, it helps with the exterior wall there. Interior and exterior wall that works in tension. All right, you can see this design here. Well, this engineer didn't appear to understand or you know, how to spec these and put them inside his this this wall system. They would have been, it would have helped um, the lady inevitable. Um, here they are here. But this is what I don't see, and you, you guys can research this, and you'll see how they're used left and right. So this is what I don't see across this, this system here, tying it over. Whether it be steel plate even, you know, anything to tie these two walls together. Whether they, you know, build the block out, tooth it out, come back around and grab the wall back in there. However, you know, low tech that way, and then whatever it may be, but there is no grabbing this the left side as we see it and the west and this side so i think this would be north and this is uh um, south and it's the west side of the building so you can you can say that so but in our case we're just saying the right side and left side um there is no grabbing those two together and we're going to you're going to see that defect i call it a defect and numerous uh in, in these repairs let me get you the next uh so remember, this is the February 2nd. So this is Trishina addressing from the what it's called the, the Davenport Development Neighborhood Services. Um, February 8th. Okay, so we fast forward six days. And it says Andrew. She's addressing Andrew. Electrical work and permits at various properties. Please see the list below. For electrical permits, work that need your attention. If you if you went through these reports, you realize that just cutting to the chase, Quinn Electrical at the bottom there has canceled all permits. Um, I, I think the reasoning being someone started doing work, and it basically looks like they wanted to be under his name. It says permit was canceled by Quinn Electrical. Need electrical permit inspection. It's 324 Main Street, um, Unit 614 specifically. There's tons of issues with this where Quinn walked away. Quinn has canceled all permits. Permit was only issued for microwave receptacles. All right? So Quinn did that one. And then all these other work was done by a non-licensed person. Uh, bonding gas piping and dishwasher receptacles. However, there has been new electrical wiring within wall units, within walls in units, that have been completed by someone other than the electrical contractor. This address, is, this address needs electrical permits for the remainder of the work and inspection to close permits. Interesting, she said, for the remainder of the work. Not all work, including that. Any work done by an unlicensed individual will have to be abated and redone, then she states that, by a licensed contractor to meet code, electrical contractor. And this is Trishina again. This time she leaves off her other credentials and she calls herself Chief building official and so as we look at the uh, rental certificates these are the places these are the rental certificates here so this document does not have the uh, february 8th um complaint this is just the complaint about the rentals no heat water issues etc dumpster nuisance um things like that but we have on May 15th, looking at the complaints from Unit 311. Unit 311 states, um, Trent's apartment is the backside 
where brick wall was worked on. Trent says his walls are getting worse with cracks. So, um, this is this one right here to here, unit 311. I'm going to move that now. You just can see it. Okay, so that was on May, um, I'm sorry, so that's Trent, unit 311, May 15th. Okay, let's look at that. I'm sorry. Yep, May 15th, the same, same thing. So, because it's C and D, two different things here. C and D at the very top says uh, actual start date, actual stop date. Um, uh, where they, I guess, stop, meaning stop by. Um, I don't know that for sure. Status F completed. So, let's look at back down to Trent 311. Um, Trent, Trent, May 5th, May rather, Unit 311, okay, May 5th, where are you, 311, let me get you caught up, hold on, so there it is here, um, this one here, okay, oops, oh, if you sign over, if you follow it over, it says completed, we tap that one. It says May 15th and May, May 15th. Um, and it's about the Trent is stating his wall is failing. Okay. So please don't contact Trent. Trent can reach out to whomever he wants to. Um, they, they put his number here. Someone brought that to my attention um, about the numbers, names, numbers there. Um, no, that's, that's not, you know, Trent wasn't calling, calling you about this. Trent was calling them about it. Unless you're a lawyer, then you should contact Trent. If Trent's not one of the, um, uh, person who is missing, I don't know the names. Okay, so here is a call from Mid-American on condition of Southwest, Southwest exterior brick wall. Replacing kind, there is the permit, 100 linear feet brick. So there was the mistake on, we got the one port report, and then you have this 100 linear feet there. Due to a large building failure collapse in existing, all of a sudden they close it out. But the right here is replacing kind, 100 feet. It's the second from the bottom, May 24th, building permit. It says building permit is on the 24th. His complaint was on the uh, 15th. It says, reinspection other. So that's the third one up. That's unit 209. They were there on right here. So they were just there. They, uh, just as Trent was calling in saying, hey, I got cracks in my walls. Um, they came again on the, uh, the, you know, um, yeah. The 15th, that's May 15th, Trent called on um, May 15th, so they, 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 they came out, they looked, apparently for these they did not come out and look, and now let's go to, uh, you know, the reports to tie us in from then until now. So let's take note of the date. This is this is the uh, um, December first, twenty twenty, and let's just the highlighted part down here. All exterior walls, exterior re, re, uh, engineers report, structural engineers report required, and all recommended engineer repairs be permitted and scheduled for permitted and scheduled for repair prior to May fourteenth. 2021 so they gave them huge amount of time uh, just to get going on this so all violations be completed prior to reinspection so they they determined that they had to may 14th and without even having the they determined that they had to may 14th that the city did oh let's see if we can get a signature on that one 
Exterior repairs, repair exterior walls, repair all cracked or missing mortar and bricks. All work must be have permits applied, and scheduled work must be started prior to May 14th. Started. Exterior window and door sill. Okay, right. Okay. This is the, I've seen this guy a few times. Anthony Halt, I think it is, and he's from Davenport.com. Neighborhood Services Department. So this is the one where I talk about the guy's brickwork. It looks, you know, nice and lines, etc. But remember, there's no tying in here. There's no toothing one side to the other or using the ties I showed you uh, the, or different brand of ties. Uh, what's also noteworthy is right here. This is not buckled away. We will get to an image to show it buckled away. What's n now clearly identifiable are all these spots like this, or, or the face buckling. Okay, um, this was a street a sign, signage, not, and it was painted over. So, there was that color there. Um, we have what appears to be buckling there. And this is 1013, um, 20, the one coming up. Oh, nothing there. Okay, so that's eight. That's uh, eight twenty-seven twenty. So at eight twenty-seven twenty, this was connected to the structure. All right, this is where they had that facade issue that they worked on. Eight twenty-seven twenty. So going back in time again, this is August twenty, August eighteenth, twenty twenty. This is Chris Townsend. This is Townsend Engineering. All right. Location is where we're talking about. This is August 18th. Let's go to the bottom. Three pages. Townsend Engineering, Civil Structural, and Chris Townsend, PE. He's talking about um, notice falling brick above windows. Um, he's talking about the damage. This is the, the by masonry we're going to talk about. All right, today, Corey, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that name there, so we're just going to skip it for my sake, and myself inspected the structure located at 327 uh, Dower, uh, due, due to some brick falling from the exterior of the sixth floor. Sixth floor? Wow. On to the sidewalk below. Photos were taken. Well, if they're falling, where did they, else did they fall to? They could fall to the roof on that midsection, right? Photos were taken at the time of the inspection and have been included with this email. So, this is an email. This evaluation is limited in scope, focusing only on obstructions, observations made from visible evidence. No additional destructive or invasive testing was performed, so no additional testing was done. The six-story uh, structural structure located at this location was reported structure in 1906 as a total. He said... Uh, Constructed in 1906. We have a 1911, but he says 1906. Total of 83,850 square feet. Originally, building design plans were obtained uh, for the obtained the Davenport uh, from the, the sources, the Davenport Public Library, and were viewed and photographed for a comprehensive knowledge of the construction components. Assumptions have been made that the building was actually built as shown. The plans indicate that the floor system for all six floors are comprised of poured on site concrete floors, approximately nine inches in overall thickness, which run primary in a north to south direction. So this would be west and they're north, oops, north to south. All right, the the primary running north to south direction that is the what is running the the uh, six floors, uh, approximately nine inches in overall thickness, which run approximately in a north to south direction. The concrete floors are supported by two inch deep lip along the north and south exterior wall. So two inch deep north and south. All right, I'm going to tell you this thing is like. Um, Twin Towers. I, I try to load that video up for you for some reason. It just won't load. I have to edit five minutes out of it. 
and it won't load. You know, it's always got to do five minute editing out of something. Um, and it, it, it just keeps failing every time I try to load it. So uh, it's it's must be how, what I've processed it to. So I want you to think of this as a core. And just like we're at WTC, the outside wall is load bearing for the in, in, in WTC. It's, it's joist, right? And this one, it's steel joist. Secure it to the outer wall. So you lose the outer wall, you lose the, uh, it falls back to the core where there's steel only. So let's go. It says, uh, the plans indicate that the floor system for all six floors are composed of poured on site concrete floors, approximately nine inches in overall thickness, which run from pr primarily in a north to south direction. Not all the time, primarily. The concrete floors are supported by a two inch deep lip. That's what he just said. And uh, uh, along the north and south exterior building walls. And by intermittent steel beams with columns at the interior of the building. So here is your wall. And I believe the lippage for referencing is that it only goes in there two inches. That's the concrete going all the way over, two inches only on top of the wall. Go back to green, so here's your exterior of the wall. Just two inches on top of there. And then internally, it has, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a steel structure. And so they, would, they ran the steel like that over here. Out to, the, out to here and put the floor on it. And where we have our collapse section over here, we have the steel coming this direction. All right. Let's just take some liberty here um, because they're going to turn. At some point, they got to turn and go that way. Unless they ran a column there and then ran steel out to the corner. I do not know how they did their corners. But I, I, I don't think they did that. But they probably did like that, like WTC. At the corners, they turn... And put it back on the brick. So if they turn, this is the steel, and they turn the steel this direction. Supporting the wall down here does absolutely nothing, as I talk about. So if you lose the outer walls, you get your your steel beams rotating. These are short segments to help support it. You get your short. You get it uh, folding back to the core, and the core. This is just a sample of it. It's not the scale, obviously. Okay. So, going on. Um, the uh, exterior... Let me do the count. The north and south portions of the building where the majority of the ins inspection took place has two rows of beams which run in an east to west space 17 feet apart. Okay, so east to west... 17 feet apart. Oh, and space approximately 17 feet in from the north to south. So that's a 17 foot span there. Um, right there. It says space uh, 17 feet in from the north and south. So this is the one to the left is a mirror image to the right. This beam spacing leaves approximately 9 feet of floor through the middle of each section of the building. A row of beams and columns also run in a north to south direction. Approximately 25 feet west of the exterior wall. Okay, west, 25 feet. So there's a row of beams. There is where's what does it says a row of beams. Um, nine feet from blah, 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 blah. nine feet of flooring through the middle of, the, of each section. Right, a row of beams right here, and columns. So beams and columns also run in a north to south direction. Okay, that's north. South direction. In the middle of each section. 
No, where, where, where? North to south direction. Approximately 25 feet west of the east exterior wall. So that is 25 feet approximately. So here is 25 feet span to the outer wall. Hopefully I can still read without writing, without this stuff in the way. Um, the exterior walls are constructed of two layers of brick. This is two layers. And an, in, and an inside layer of clay tile equaling uh, to approximately 13 inches in overall thickness. Hmm. I saw more brick than that. I saw four courses. So, but he's seeing um, two. Right there, two layers of brick and, and an inside layer. That's three. Two plus one equals... Three. And he states, let me clear this out. No, I won't. It says, uh, of clay tile equaling approximately 13 inches in overall thickness. Hmm. According to the original plans, the main floor of the building has 16 foot tall ceilings. Shit. Remember the other guy said they're 15 foot to the underside? Well, this guy's saying 16. Um, 16 foot tall ceilings. Floors 2 through 5 are indicated to have 9 foot 6 inch ceilings. I call them 10. But remember, they also have the thickness of the floor. So that makes it even larger. And the 6 floor ceiling height varies from east to west. As the uh, this side of the structure, they didn't collapse. That top six floor is much taller than the sixth floor over here. Okay, um, to have nine foot ceiling. And the sixth floor ceiling height varies from east to west. Okay, east to west. Well, that would be north, the north side and the south side. So from front to back, I guess they're saying. The plan, sets, uh, uh, the plan set indicates that the west side of the street, of the sixth floor, has a ceiling height of approximately 11 feet. Oh, maybe that's the 11 foot. And due to the sloping roof line, I think it goes down here like that. And uh, due to the sloping roof line, the east end... of the building ceiling was measured during the inspection to be approximately 15 feet tall. So it's, it's higher on the other end. Uh, so you can see the images of it. The, the drone images, you'll see that it didn't collapse, so it looks good. During the inspection, the primary focus was directed at the exterior brick facade on the east and north side, not, not the west. Sixth floor, at the time of the inspection, the bricks had fallen from the east side of the north face. Remember, this is not, let's make this clear, these are falling from the top, the sixth floor. This is not buckling, all right? Not buckling. It's no load on them. So we're back to the soft lime mortar, all right? The lime mortar is the problem now. This lime mortar is washing out. These bricks are just sliding off. All right, this is the sixth floor. We looked at unit 601, 602. Northeast corner of the building, unit 615 at the southwest corner. Sorry, I'm just going to read a little fast. We have inspected these three units in the past three years. Okay, so they've got a history with the building. So if anybody's going to do the inspection, it wouldn't be Papa Smurf who wants to get on, get in on this, guys, if you don't know that. He's trying to drop a, a, a hint. You would use this guy. This guy, his building didn't fail. The last engineer, his work kind of fell through. So you wouldn't want to use him, but you'd want to use his information. But this guy is more in depth. We have inspected these three units in the past three years, so he got a history with it. We could not find any noticeable cracking of the drywall. That's interesting. He said noticeable. How about any cracking of the drywall or any other movement when comparing today's photos with the previous inspection photos? The roof of the building was also inspected. Hmm. Any noticeable cracks when you're comparing from the previous to current day? So that means that there could have been cracks in the original photos. And this is a tricky way of saying uh, it's stable. Uh, so you can't use this guy then because that's just a tricky way of saying it's stable. But you're not really, because you're comparing, comparing today's photos with the previous inspection. 
So today's for the previous inspection photos could have had cracks in them, but now he's not revealing the cracks. He's not stating it here by doing that, that type of wording. The roof of the building was also inspected. Damage to the parapet cap was found near the north, uh, correction, southwest um, corner over here. Southwest corner and several areas of the roofing had also been damaged during last week's storm. We did not find any recent movement of the parapet on the any recent movement of the parapet east side of the north or south section of the roof. North or south, and this is east. So he looked at the parapet on that street. Remember that wall, that goes back like that. So I guess that counts. And then the lower one roof counts, and that counts up here. These are all parapets. One, two, three, four. It's got four parapets. Um, let's go on. The damage of the parapet cap was found near the, cause unless he's talking about the 16th floor, right? We did not find any uh, uh, recent movement. Okay, right. It is, it, is, in my, in my, it is, in my professional opinion, the structural components of the exterior walls have not moved over the last three years, but the brick facade has separated in some locations, causing the brick ties to come loose. Um, which allows the bricks to fall. Uh, brick ties meaning not those ties I just mentioned. It would be the, the bricks that turn this direction. The structural part. And he's saying these, uh, they broke bond. It was my recommendation that by masonry, um, either remove or stabilize all the loose bricks and limestone immediately to prevent more brick from falling to the ground. The brick and the limestone, oh shit, there it is. Limestone around the area where the brick will be removed and any other areas that appear to have bowed out will be covered with plywood that is anchored to the exterior clay block. There's a clay block. I remember reading this part of the report. There's, it was this clay block shit to hold the brick in place until the permanent repair is made. It's my professional opinion that it is safe to occupy after the brick facade is temporarily secured, we will be we will develop a plan to temper permanently repair the exterior brick. Okay, this is the other this is the this is that side there. And so he's photographing that. So he's referencing that section of the structure as the photographs indicate also. It should be noticed that by masonry was mentioned back in twenty that report twenty twenty. It's again, so it's Townsend Engineering, and there's a structure, and by state masonry was mentioned in 20, August 2020, and that's uh, Tony Holt. Okay, Chris Townsend is the one who's from Chris Townsend, from the engineering Chris Townsend, okay? We, we bring it to this violation. Exterior walls, deterioration, missing exterior block, brick, stucco, stone. And this is by this Halt guy, this uh, Anthony Halt, code enforcement officer, neighborhood services department. And as you scroll to the top, you check out the date. This brings us up to 2020. Here it is, 2021. Uh, March 12th of 2021. Open active building permit. So the way they did the, the, uh, the drop the, is the way we're, I'm going through it also. In other words, the way the, they released it to us. We're now back to 2020, almost 2021, almost. And this is the what you see, the complaint. And you see that we're, we're at that back, that wall again. And we have it, you know, the unpainted. We have this thing just bursting out. The, uh, the, uh, this, this soft wall. There's some brick infill. But again, they just butt it right up to it. So what makes them think that these two are going to act the same? And this is where I'm going to try to end the video with you. I want you to think what happened. They made columns when they did this. So here's this fracture line here. There's one created by joint, just by being a coal joint. And now it's six floors above it. It goes fans left and fans right. 
but there is six stories, this being, what, about 16 feet, the guy said? And then they switch over to that brick. Remember, this brick isn't really tied into the structural brick anymore. So it's it's 16 foot friggin' tall, and, and it's a soft brick. This clay brick and this silly, uh, um, not silly, you know, lime, stone, lime, lime mortar mix, and you don't even see it present. Um, and that, and as I zoom in, you don't see the white lines. And so we have this thing just just different. Every time you see a, a fracture, I want you to think of it as a column. A column of brick till you no longer see it. So this is a column. Okay, this is a column. All right, these aren't, these aren't working together. They're not lefty and righty. All right, that's not lefty and righty. This is working by itself. Now it's interesting. Remember, there's a window here. So low path goes left and right. It's picked back up under the underside of that window as a load. So it could be a piece of steel there that's, that's loading at that point, the 25-foot uh, span. It could be loading there. It could be loading here. Um, and what you're looking at is the, the compressive forces of the loads. Remember, there is, there's a heavy wall in there, heavy, heavy, uh, heavy uh, flooring these are the floors and it seems so small of an area doesn't it section wise so the, 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 so are we back to that steel here again I don't know we I need to get those plans that they have because that 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 uh, the, the, their, that displacement is very is very interesting to say the least you've got the rotation here so you know you got your break there so that's a section you've got this no this side no longer connected to that side let me clear it up um the bricks don't they're not sharing the low path right it's a full crack there's no rebar in it it's not that wire i showed you the helix the helifax the helix uh shaped steel so above there, they put this, um, they painted over it now, this arched header there. But the arch header here has very, very limited load right there. The arch is going down to the outside, putting pressure. If load was coming down, it would be going out, going out here. Oh, what right about there? Can we come up? What was that, the arch again doing that? So... Now we have a, a, cell, uh, a slim column because the window is the section, and there's your fracture on that side. I don't have duplication on this one, on that side. So to the right, I have that um, that low path. I can't see any more, um, and we have this broken there. It's, it's so crazy, and it, the lime's all gone. Look at it. The lime's all gone. Remember, it was falling from the sixth floor. Now, in the first video I made, I said, it looks like the right side, when they painted this, sticks out more than the left side. It's, it's, clearly it's bursting out, you know, buckling out. Clearly it's coming towards us. Now, that one looks like it's turned um, backwards, back in there like a tie. Oh, this is the image, too, that it says some of them look like, this one looked like there's a few of them turned back as a tie. I think I found one more course here. This is probably that video that I couldn't load up. It's above a doorway. See the doorway? Um, but I couldn't find the, 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 the duplication again with the imagery. Remember, it's a painted building. So this just fractured, right? And, and it's twisting. And, and, and each engineer, both of these, well, the first, the second one for sure, but this is 1220, is saying, you know, it's a hard set. It's a hard pass, meaning hard good. It's yeah, it's good. That's okay. We're just a little bit of work. We'll be all right. You know, this thing shit looks like shit to me. I mean, look at it. Does that look like it's carrying a load path? It can't. It's a gap there. It's 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 an open gap. And now you know the brick is already ejected out. It's the same location. Here's that damn wall again, and here's her column. But this has not opened up more here, but this has opened up more. So now it looks like the wall is pushing outwards. And now we have scaffolding up on December 16th. 
And now, perhaps, there is no planks up there. There's no planks at this elevation. So I will not say that they took out the uh, the brick there. Um, maybe they did, and they lowered their planks. Um, I mean, they're missing, for sure. They fully planked their scaffolding. That's good. Um, do, 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 what are we doing here? I don't know what this is doing. With the white there, is that parging? What is it? Then we have above the window here, we have the, the member of the, the header. The is transferring the load. Loads are going out. It's it's tight. You know, it's not it's not breaking apart. Over to the right it looks tight. And left pretty much looks tight. Um but above it is failing. And yet again, there's a window above that. So why is it failing? Are we look I mean, did all the did all of the uh, lime just wash away? Looking at the brick there, the brick there looked pretty flat. But that's a significant point there. It is a, it was a windowsill. I did think about air conditioning units, things like that, but I only found one. All right, so they set up the scaffolding. There is, it's just 1220. What do you got? Buy this lift or what? It's still there. It's 1220. Um, no, I don't know if it's the same lift. All right, so just a small section of scaffolding set up. So this is going to be, a, it's the winter time. So this is, a, a, you know, I looked at it and I was like, what the hell is, it reminds me of a skin graft. So this is remove, remove and replace, R&R. &R. Take out some bricks, put back some bricks. Uh, that's what it looks like. Put them back, you know, so-so. Not really plumb because this building's out of plumb, I think. And no one mentions about the, um, I'm going to have a little fun again, the plumicity of it. I say that because uh, it helps you remember when I tease like that. Learn that from a teacher um, to purposely get some words to trigger people. Um, so I want to bring attention to this report because this report doesn't mention any uh, any part of the brick. It is specific though to 208 and they replace hallway ceiling tiles. Really? So this is the sub-level, the basement area. Um, and you can see the uh, utilities. The 16 foot high ceiling area there. Well, possibly they did, they did work. At that, that's where they would be doing the work. You see there's some interior, uh, what appears to be interior structural columns. So here's that clarity of Allegiance Alliance. As you can see that there are different uh, contractor. Looking above, this is where I twisted it up myself. Oh, uh, where it says Andrew Wolf and Alliance Contracting. Um, the, for, for clarity, interior uh, brick structural column a moment ago. So on, uh, on 2021, another structural report was demanded by the municipality. Complaint notice and order, Davenport, and that's dated 7-19-2021. Re-inspection is schedule, scheduled, I'm sorry, on 8-23. So July 19th, um, and as you come down here, it says notes. Apartment 105. So 105, first floor, right? It is for the apartments. West wall at doorway. Structural engineer re near's report required on west wall structural integrity or scope of required to make it to make proper repairs. So this inspector knows just right off the bat that this needs a structural repairs, not evaluation. Uh, just evaluation. Wall sheet rock repairs required to match existing walls after structural work has been completed. This is apartment 105, still addressing it. And this is by Anthony Hall. Hall uh, uh, yeah. I'm going to leave that alone. Now we fast forward. This is July 9th. So let's go to back to top again. This is This one is July 19th. So remember when they do these reports, sometimes they feed them to you backwards. So, um, status flagged, follow-up, Friday, July 9th. All right, so this is the first one. 
This is rental. Three dress. 324. 105 called in. Here's 105's phone numbers apparently. Drywall around door parking. Door to parking lot is not stable. And door is very difficult to open. Not sure they're structurally sound. This is their... their this say to... Please do not reply to this message. Replies this... Okay. Called at 713... Uh, the date, 7-13. Let's confirm the date on this. Whoa. Um, so then, that must be a follow-up. Because, wait a minute. This is 7-9. This is the task case number, I guess. Um, call that's on 7-13 at 1-10, p.m. And apparently on 7-15 at 9 a.m. Um, I guess they called that person after the complaint came in and that's Patrick Brown all right so Patrick Brown has images so there's the door going out going out to the hallway I would guess no 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 this is a the complaint for that first floor there's the there's the uh, HM light above so internally you see the walls uh, stud walls are also mirroring fractures. Um, and that's what they should be able to see. And uh, ceiling. And cast iron and separation. And this is the door here, I believe. And you're just taking a look at it from that side. Well, that's interesting. It doesn't even look like it's got drywall tape on it. Um, exterior piping, uh, door. Okay, why did he f focus up there? Door's too tight. Won't open. Um, door separating here. At the frame. And I'm glad that's over with. So, fast forwarding to 10-7. Even though the report was a call for, etc., etc., he says... As of this date of this this date of this letter, the following violations substandard conditions have not been corrected. That doorway structural engineer's report. So the person blew it off from July out to you know three more months. And as you can see, the that date ten seven, that a second inspection has been scheduled for eleven to one. Because the property manager, appointment was scheduled per reference date above to perform the inspection of rental property. The signed code enforcement officer was at the property at a designated date and time, but was unable to perform the inspection because property arrangements had not been made by you or your designee to allow access to the building, buildings, and or areas requiring inspection. They didn't do it. They didn't perform, so they were delaying. And now they put it out. They get the bottom another month. It should be noted that official notice to vacate, to vacate the property, this is specific apartment 105. I heard the um, guys get excited, the newscaster, people get excited about some vac vacate, vacate, vacate. There's specific units. Fast forward to the same complaint, and this is the 11th, that follow-up date, that he said he'd be back out. Now you see the door. And you see that there is some type of wood stud put there that they just trimmed up, a 2 by 4 or whatever. It changed the gapping, but it's just shitty, shoddy work. As you can see, it looks like they're using an axe to, to uh, do it. You see the door doesn't close. It, pin it binds there. As he looks at it from the outside, there's the photograph. And there's uh, that. And there's your, uh, your 105. Um, 105 got apparently condemned at that point on 12 9 21. They just said, you know what? You're not complying. Condemned. See, this is where it gets a little crazy for me about that alliance thing again. Owner's name doesn't say owner and contractor, it says Andrew Wald Alliance. Contracting, so I'm I give and I take. I'm taking it back again. Is Alliance Contracting Andrew Wald? You see, Dash Andrew Wald under owner's name, not under contractor's name. 
On the contractor's name, they put Peterson Plumbing and Heating Company. So the owner's name is it is Alliance Contracting. And I put allegiance the other other moment. I didn't. I, I. It's it's a problem with trying to read too fast, and you part of it is you have to you try to guess the rest of the word, and um, therein lies the defect. So I said allegiance. It's alliance contracting. I did I did correct it in the comments of that video. Uh, it says structural um, demolition. Um, where wait a minute. This is. Set fixtures in 35 units fit. This is electrical stuff. 23K. All right. It's 23,000. And this is that. Um, yeah, this might be the one. The the, uh, the the plumbing thing right there. Not the, not the other one. These are literally fixtures. The uh, bathroom fixtures. Uh, let's look at the notes there. Uh, yep. So in internally, there's there's quite a few uh, different load paths of these brick columns. Solid wall, you know, where they where they this is an old building, you know, where they a coal chute or something like that at one time. Oh, there's the protection going up. This is uh, oh we're up, we're up there. This one jumped into uh, uh, February third, the uh, repair by the uh, uh, the first brick guy. Um, and these are the images by the code official. So here it is. Here's the guy again, Andrew Wald, from the fire marshal. Date. This is March uh, this year, thirteenth. All right, inspection. Inspector Tony. That guy's name again. Hat. Anyway, Holt, director with neighborhood services division, and this reporting officer conducted a complaint inspection reference blocked. Block exiting at the landmark apartments, 324 right. All right, so fire doors, blah, 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 neighborhood services. All right. So now you see that Jim Morrison, fire marshal, that's the guy that showed up and you get to start crying on us or whatever he was doing, wiping his eyes. So Andrew Wald is the owner, as you see. Allegiance contracting I think here's another one of the properties uh, notice to vacate they did not do the repairs on so they put a notice to vacate on it they condemn that 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 unit so now that brings us up to May 25th 2023 bringing your attention to remember the engineer stated that these are supposed to be grouted and not all of them, uh, but four of them in that wall system. Grouted with number five rebar added and also dowels tying an existing wall. As I told you, think of it as a column. There's your column system for the wall. There's a steel for the steel, I believe. And part of your wall separation is here. Here as we as presented with a, with a gap. And here would be the gap again. So, what do we have here? Shoddy craftsmanship, or is that the grout that he poured inside the block and it ran over the face? Yep, I would say that that's the first block he grouted, and then he uh, just, you know, with a bucket, just slapped it in there. And then the second one, and these have not been grouted as a time. So maybe he grouted all of them, or maybe he grouted, uh, no, not. And that's what you see bleeding through. All right, that's sitting on top of a basement. A basement, um, I don't know. What's it, what, the basement window? So we're up in it, we're up in elevation a bit. And how's that load transferring? And you look at this brick. I mean, really, it's it's some terrible. I mean, that, look at that, look at that huge gap there. And he didn't tell him to continue this over. He just said close this in. He didn't find it of concern. The engineer didn't find this of con concern to address it right then to have this block addressed to come over to here and then tie in here with the coils. 
again, I think that's because he just doesn't know about them. Um, and then we've got the block sitting here. But he said he's not dealing with construction methods, but he did. He showed him how to do the, the bracing and how he wanted the rebar and how he gave details. He gave a detail, you know, detail mean plan. And he showed the rebar. Now, this is going up plumb, but the wall, exterior wall, is not, let's say this is plumb. And this wall is not plumb. And how is he tying to that wall there? Do you see any helix or any tying into that brick there? This is the one I believe they knocked down. They remove. So this goes up, and then they remove that one um, later. So look at the time, 7.54 a.m., and this should be 7.54 a.m. This is the day that Chris was there along with the lady, excuse me, who resigned. People wondering, is your two downspouts and your gutter? Excuse me. So this is, the, this is just, you know, a couple of days before the collapse. So as you look at the structure and you try to look at it, you got a fracture here and here. All right, they're not connected. All right, there are fractures now. Not connected. Not connected, not connected. This is plumb, but this is sitting on top of it, sort of mortared in. Can't see that far up. Not connected, not connected, not connected. Cold joints, all cold joints, no tying in there. Cold joints, not connected, just right there. So if you start mapping this monster, you start seeing one. You can start seeing how it's it's not connected in multiple paths. All right. You start seeing, like right there, right between that box there, and then this one, cold joint. All right, just butting up there. They don't, they don't overlap. Nothing tying them together. So they're creating these multiple columns. Multiple columns that aren't going across each other on the face at least. You know, I can't have x-ray vision eyes, but on the face at least, these are showing buckling, you know, deflection, showing craziness. This is the guy that I, I think uh, I think I'll show you in a minute. This is 7.54 a.m. on that day, on May 25th. She takes, he, he takes a photograph of the structure down here, this existing one. And this is the um, what he tied his bricks into. You don't see broken paint, so apparently it's stable at that point. But you see this. This is that doorway I told you about. That later I would show you. The doorway with that guy's brickwork. It's now buckling out. There's, a, there's the rotation there. It's buckling at that point. So it's taking a load because he just added the panel. He just infilled it. It's taking its own load. What, what the hell is going on? Um, and it buckled there. Okay. So there is the buckle here. I'm going to erase it. But then we have this here also that's compressive. So there's multiple... I think this is multiple columns if you look at them. At this veneer, since it's not tied back, no longer. You've got these six-story columns all right and some of these columns six stories tall the dimensions buckle and we have another column between it because this is now separated with fractures and things like that i don't know what that jackass move there with just leaning the two by four against the wall is about And we have, it's just coming down anyway, so I guess that was a comfort thing for people to look at. All right, maybe when the fire department showed up, they said, oh, that's bracing us, we're good. Um, anyway, you see the fractures there, all right? You see another fracture here. This side and this side are moving bypass each other. This one looks more accelerated, buckling out further than this one, and that's how we get... The right side here, the right side sticking out further than that side. So this panel, including over here, has buckled out more. Internally, we see they did put a temporary support up. 
Um, and here's your wall. You notice how he dialed into the walls as per the engineer's plans? I don't see them. And what do you dial into? This piece of shit here? So you dial into the bricks. All, I mean, look at all this brick on the ground. You dial into... That's that sill, but now we're talking. We're looking at a different location because we don't see the mud on the wall. So now you're looking at this brick wall. There's another face. There's a column. Remember that co these this pipe was was encased with brick around it. Now it, it stands proud forward, but not here. But down here it stands proud forward. So you have a layer of brick. They're not transferring down the loads down because they're not there. They're literally not there. And then you have voids upon voids upon voids. And then you have separations, which create, again, individual columns. You know, this would be a column. What he's created would be another column. And now we look at the wall at that door. Hmm, I didn't know the door had that color on it. I thought it was white. There's the support. And we see where, where it's buckled out. When the guy did the work, he did one tie back. Because remember, this is a new panel. He said, ah, let me throw one of these in here over here. Okay, here we go. That's good. Hit a hole back into that wall there. Not true. It didn't do it. Good, luckily so. It didn't take it away. This is the photograph, I think, trying to imply that it's scrap. But the problem is, it was supposed to be rebar also. And I don't see the rebar in her photograph. Um... And now you see he's up to the top there, mortared in again. Um, where is where the, where are the dowels? Well, she showed up multiple times through the day. Morning, nine twenty nine. He's got it closed up. At seven something, she's looking at the wall, and there's no drill, drilled holes in epoxy, or grouted in um, bars going in place. There's nothing showing like that. There's no substitute for it that the engineer approved. There, that's just 7.54 uh, a.m. Oh. Here's the one brace. There we go. There's your block wall that's so so that's still fresh. Um, and I guess you, that's just whatever that is. Oh, uh, the block work. Uh, I saw a couple of block work of the other guy that you might be proud of that are just stack, it's a stack bond. Now you can do a stack bond, especially if you're adding that rebar, but you know, stack bonds most guys don't like. I, I'm okay with it. It depends on what, what century you did it in. All right, 929. It's the last image. So does you know it? The landlord is also Andrew Wald Investments, LLC. So let's go back to um, Trishina. Remember, she has this under her title, American Institute of Architects. So she's, no, she's, no, she's not just your typical chief building official. She is... Uh, the official out here at this building, rather. She's intelligent. She's got some knowledge behind her. In fact, she says that part of the southwest wall has been gradually failing. She recognizes it as failing. The failure is seen to continue on the inside. Uh, well, that's bricks. Bricks on well, bricks. Bricks of brick masonry as wall as well. There is visible crumbling of the exterior low-bearing wall under the support beams. Lo and behold, she's saying what I'm saying, that under the support beams, the wall is buckling. All right, that's what she's looking at, that crumbling, the wall is buckling. But yes, yeah, she still wants them to go back for the brick, and, you know, she plays that card too. So, like, really? Ugh. The exterior brick veneer has separated, allowing rain ice to build up, causing further damage, expansion and contraction, electrical and gas equipment, that are located the exterior of the wall has to be protected from masonry failure. Notice masonry failure is a low bearing section, is what she's referencing. To continue to use the building, provide engineers' letter stating there is no imminent danger. 
Okay. This is dated February 3rd, February 2nd. Okay. Um, uh, it should be provided within 48 hours. Um, within, okay, so February 2nd. I think he would give, he complied, I think it was the 4th. Anyway, engineers report to be provided right, 24 hours. Infrastructure, but she states that, uh, um, protect the infrastructure, the exterior with scaffolding, so utility, talking about the electric utilities. Emergency vacate order will be posted on the building if the failing masonry area is not secured per this letter. So she's also telling them to secure it, the masonry area. Is she referring to protecting utilities? All right. Permits for structural wall repairs shall be placed within 10 days. Repairs work can be completed as soon as... So she makes it clear that this failure is happening. Exterior low-bearing wall under support. So she's making it clear, but she wants an engineer to give a detail of it. But she should. But here it is. She should demand that the, the engineer bring it to um, support this load path. Um, this 10-day deal is, is kind of conflicting to me. Permits for structural wall repair shall be placed within 10 days. It seems more eminent than that with her knowledge, stating that it, there is a visible crumbling of the exterior low-bearing wall under the support. She didn't say uh, what appears to be the low-bearing wall. She says there is visible crumbling of the exterior wall, exterior low-bearing wall under the support beam. She gives location clearly. So... She understands it's it's failing, so she should have, uh, you know, insisted on uh, vacating the structure, and then get an engineer's report to say it's safe. But vacating first would have been a nice thing, but that's a hard press thing to do, guys. They uh, they get scared. But this is approximately what she saw. It was February sixth. Look at this thing. I mean, we got missing. The load path, so this is supposed to come over here like that. Kind of pushes that way now. You've got crumbling, like you said. You've got buckling walls here and here, across here. And this gets a pass, as in, you know, get to it when you get to it. I mean, look at this. Ah, get to it when you get to it. You know, when you get around to it, you know. Yeah, you know, 10 days, whatever. Something like that. I mean, look at this. I mean, does that take much to say that's failed? That that low path is not there? Does that take much? Oh. Yes, this was supposedly remedied, but the remedy was the six-inch uh, block wall, which can't be grouted either. Uh, and now we got some delamination. That's weird right there. Let's just move on. And 2-6 has applied. There's a protection of the electric of the gas unit, not an electrical unit. This is what it looks like in the further view. And there's their car parked right up on it. I believe that's a car. And you look at it. This is just all, all failed. All right. It's all separated. Like basically a full, full crack going all the way across down to that low path, which is nothing here. So you can continue it that way if you like. Um, and it's just full shear plane, like this whole section can come out, which I think they ultimately did repair that, uh, take it out. There it is. You, you see a bypass. The one, one brick is f further out than the others. Uh, there's another image of it in, in February 9th. I mean, lo look at the bow on that. Look how much is blow, blowing out. And this wasn't recall for immediate um, condemnation. They must really need... These municipalities are just evil. They're just evil with uh, just wanting money. All right, so let's look at the brick on the floor. And this is a not, not the net date. There is interior blocked up wall. And it's carrying its load down onto the soft not fully grouted brick. There's that box. I remember this box and when he does his repairs. I remember that box. 
but there is that steel. Um, I don't know if it's a pipe, uh, sewer pipe or not, but or vent. It's probably sewer since it goes down the ground, right? Or vent. It might be vent. All depends what year and code they worked under. So it's like it's, it's like they routed right through the brick, slapped it up, but there's some plaster across it, so you can time when this was done. But they created a shear plane, uh, a break in the structure with that pipe. With that pipe like that. Oh, and there's your 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 uh, your tie course right there, the structural course. But remember, the fright the face doesn't have it. Not there. Okay. And we just got some temporary supports just leaning against the wall here. Some delamination. Some. Is that a window frame? Like this? That's kind of a weird shape. And then maybe that's the beam covered with plaster. Okay, so this doesn't contest the structural internal wall. So this low path is obviously not carrying the low path down to the foundation. It is 100% going there and that's it and it transfers through the brick connections out to the sides if it can make it. Doesn't make it over here though. This is separated. So here's a nice section that maybe over to the corner, maybe it turns right there. But this section doesn't carry the low path. No big deal. No, no big deal. So what? So what? No low path is carried down to the foundation. So what? You see the the brick and eminent collapses of you know killing people. Anybody there? No big deal. If that goes, it would just stop right there. It wouldn't take off the rest of the wall. You know, even if you think it would only take out the veneer, the veneer enough would be enough that would uh, be condemnable. Look at the, uh, just put up this, uh, you know, caution tape and yo, we're good. Uh, this municipality is, you know, negligent. Now this is, I find this interesting, this support being over here. I thought this was the beam there. And because of the, you know, the way it's boxed out. They didn't just box out high wood ductwork. So here's the beam over here. And then they're just pressing it against the drywall. They're guesstimating where the beam is. What the hell are they doing there over there? Or is that the concrete floor? What the hell are they doing over there? And now we're getting, remember, slippage. Remember, they only talked about two inches on that one wall, north and south. How many inches over here? Is it also two inches? And you can see all the fractures. I mean, this thing is just fractured all the hell. Okay, so they climbed up for inspection. There's that pipe that goes up. Um, there is the, the temporary brace. And I think it's just on the floor. I don't know if it's on the beam or not. They're not clarifying it. There's a brace. Um, look, I mean, come on, look at this old ass brick just washed away and that's it. That's interior that is failing like that. What the hell? That's the, uh, probably the, uh, the gas is from the heater heating system. Oh, really? It's just terrible. Look at that. So the people that run here too, obviously aren't the brightest lamps. So getting a class action lawsuit might be close to impossible with these people because, well, they, quite frankly, are, are not, not the brightest lamps to get together. I'm doing that condescendingly so you'll get together. You know, I'm calling you an idiot and then you now, you know, and you are an idiot if you don't join together as a team and start a class action lawsuit. So they're working on this, and I don't know if this is live or not. Even though this cover plate is here, I don't know if it's dead or, or alive. This plate's off now. This would have been the uh, 
where they would where they would protect it. It's got a broken glass. These are the supports that they use. One, two, and this one's on an angle. It must be not any yet, I'm thinking. Oh group. Where they support the ceiling. Oh, well, they just punch right on through that that uh, concrete there. Okay, just need a little room, just go through there. Again, here is the separation. Supports are inside also, I see them. All right, yeah, there's the supports. So they supported the wall. Okay, there we go, four, four piece. Man, they have their scaffolding on this wall. That's an, and if it goes, it would uh, take them out also. This is ideal for a man lift to start high and, and, and do that. They're right there where this is a uh, danger to them. There's the brick falling down on top of that wood plank. There's the view of the upwards to 228, uh, the dates. Okay, there's uh, where they removed. Um, well, that's kind of hollowed out, isn't it? It's a, interesting to say the least. That's where they end up putting the brick up to there, I think. This is uh, 228, so that's uh, t uh, protect the workers. All this plastic, because it's probably cold there. This one I saw before. It's it, kind of interesting. It, it's, let's consider it corbelled. All right, there's another layer there that goes out. It's right there. Yeah, this takes some serious skill set to tie this back in. And it's too far gone. You need to consider redoing the structure internally, giving a steel support, tearing off all this, all this, going back with block, and then brick. And then you're in your historical again. Or somehow get yourself removed from the historical because of uh, cost. That it's, uh, it's cost prohibitive. So on February 8th, 2023, Select structures gives a detail of how supporting should be. He mentions it in a current May one also saying, you know, similar to what I said back then, but he didn't put it in his report exactly. He did reference it, so that's kind of, you know, telling you to go find the report. And you see how he details it, just like the brick guys did it. That he wanted the uh, steel, well, I don't know if they added this steel here. I'd like to know if they did. But the uh, sure brick wall with steel angle, steel angles and needle beams through walls, okay? And then you secure it down, then you're able to replace the wall system. Um, he doesn't talk about the maturity that allows before you remove the supports. He doesn't mention that. Uh, demo second, and it shows you his, his uh, demo second, four foot. Stay. So he's talking about construction means, and yet... He says he doesn't deal with construction means. He's dealing with construction means. There's that rebar grouting, all right, down in the bottom and into the wall. Um, horizontal ladder bars. Ladder bars. The black wall. Okay, it's the it's the block um, reinforcement. The wire looks like that from the top. Uh, okay, demo uh, third. Blah blah blah. Let's fast forward this thing a bit. Okay, what we got here. Um, cut notch into brick for horizontal legs. Okay, we got that. Oh, this is the detail on that steel. Oh, he said to use timbers. Interesting. Um, he would have went with that. Uh, he allowed that, but they went with poles. And he wanted, uh, steel. Y flange eight. Steel needle beam. We got two holes per segment for needle beam to pass through. Segment is his four his segments are his four foot segments. Yeah, see the word segment four foot. 
so this is that first contractor I told you about. Shoshina's, Shoshina's calling him out on his licensing. That uh, you need, the importance is very high. You need to be licensed. And that, and there's her identifications, right? And the subject, contract or resignation. Well, we were told by the municipality it was because they had a dispute in the extra money they needed. But we see it's licensure and paperwork um, that Trishina was bringing up. So maybe Trishina law, uh, law, uh, um, resigned. Resigned. I did, I did not say lie. I was trying to say resigned. Maybe she resigned because they shut her up. They told her, look, you can't, sp I'm going to speak out. You're going to lose your pension. You're going to lose whatever. I'm going to speak up. But you know what? No, no, you're not. Well, I re I'm resigning. Because this, this guy did not, um, this guy, uh, this, uh, this concrete con contractor was not licensed for the, uh, for quite some time. And she brings it to his attention. And who is he? By state masonry. Fast forward to 2023. Remember, he did the work back in the day. 2020 recommended by the other structural engineer. By state masonry. Maybe he was licensed then. But he's not licensed now. Per her arguments here. As I understand it. So right here. The two pieces of angle iron butting against each other. That's the structural wall that they're supporting with the beam he required. And he said, would six by sixes they're using um, adjustable post. Okay. And he doesn't talk about the loads. So you would figure out what it's a six by six knowing it's 16 foot tall or whatever size he thinks it might be. And you would say, okay, I need a post to take that much force plus. And so over here is where he resolves that corbeling effect, right? He'd run a block there. The brick are going to what? Another layer of brick are going to come out. Another layer of block, rather, and then and then ultimate brick with a spacer, a two by four spacer. Maybe that's why we get that two by four spacer in there. All right, but let's look at the um, the two by four spacer on the end. Let's look at this again. Okay, got it, got it in your coconut. Looks like that's not even parged. Didn't even bother doing that, making it more structurally sound. And then um, we have his cold joint, just clean, that's a window. Again, fit and finish quality, you wanna lock it in, tie it in. Um, and this looks like a weird whatever, right? She's shooting from a vehicle, as you see the mirror. Hey, Bruce, George. What's up, dude? Now, looking at this person's quality, when you start looking at the joints. Okay, joints look good. Oh, we got filler in there. Okay, so the, it's pretty, pretty straight work for that. Is it plum? I don't know. I don't know if it's plum, but I see it. A separation there. The two of them are no, no, no connection, no dowels. I don't know about any dowels or any details the engineer gave up about dow this side that together. He said run the wire across. Maybe they ran the wire across, but this is clearly a where they could have put a full block. They this is purposely done for for expansion on that wall, perhaps that they decided that would be a good idea. No, you know that, that's good logical thinking. Um, this is where I talk about where they stack the block into, just stack it. All right, just stack it. So this is when the person's starting to tap out on me as far as their quality. I want to know, why, why'd you do that? You, d you did everything great here. Why'd you do that up there? Why did you create this straight line there? Straight line here. Three core straight line here. Three core straight line here. Why, why are you doing? Why are you doing this? What's going on? 
this is why you need a, a, someone to supervise people like these people and say, hey, what are you doing? What's going on here? Oh, uh, one started from the other end, the other started the other end. Well, you should have figured it out. You should have measured it. This is the wall system, and this is all cold joints, all cold joints, because it's not too thin. It's not too thin every other every other brick. All right? It's not too thin. You say, well, they're different sizes. I don't care. Make your brick smaller then. Cut your damn brick, every other brick, cut them to, to tooth it in. All right? There's a little stair-stepping there. Um... And then this, leaving that with that overhang and this thing here, that's just, I know, that this is the guy that ultimately I think didn't keep his license though. So he, they, the city claims that he wanted more money for the finish that they wanted, but I'm confused. And he was supposed to be put off the job, so we're not looking at that guy? It gets kind of confusing. We're, at May, we're into May 1st now. All right, so now it gets confusing. Who's who? They've changed so many guys. Who's who? The, it's confused the hell out of me. Anyway, now we're back to this again. So this is just useless. That's underneath a window, and it's, the low path to there is just, it's just empty. It's just cut out. See it? So it stops there and magically just disappears. So you wonder why the internal structural wall collapse? Look at shit like this. There's no support supporting the structural wall. There's, there's no supports, meaning no brick, nothing to carry the low path down to the foundation. So you look no further than shit like this, and you start understanding why, why, it, doesn't go, why it doesn't work. Here's that thing I told you about, that pan. There it is. And the low path appears to be continuous there. All right, there is that one. But over here, this is a good image of it. I'll put it in a thumbnail in the other one. There's no load path there. All right, looks like one, two layers of two layers of structural brick. And it's the face. There's no load path. So whatever this goes all the way up, it is it's not really it's not directly making it down there, down that spot. There is no transfer until you transfer, until you put some block in it. Put some block in there, put some water in it, put it down to the foundation here, fix that. Argue, argue with the owner, you know, doubt, don't forget to doubt it. Uh, but this is way beyond level, plum. So this is very noteworthy and should be noted on March 1st, 2003. Administrative, um, right here. Approve. This is emergency repair work. So, you know, we don't just get it done. We don't, we'll work out the per permit later. You're, you're approved to, for what it states. And it states the uh, public right of way, keep the historical place and fix the bricks. Right? It's all about the brick problem. That was February 1st of this year. This is um, Trishina. Giving that that along with Laura Berkeley um, giving the approval for this. So this is uh, Davenport. Um, he puts out here a a, uh, a document that designing. We talked about this one, how it's supposed to be supported. He shows the angle iron here um, below. The supported area, you think you'd want to support the angle iron, as you showed previously. It doesn't make sense that he that he does it this way this time. That he goes above his own angle iron. Uh, I talked about the strut and tie method. That this didn't kick out. This worked. We know that we saw one buckle in this capacity, and a further one buckle like that in the capacity. Um, and you could argue that these are scaled, right? But I'd have to know this height. But I know this lentil height. And he's saying, put it here. This distance is not defined unless he defined these squares. Unless he defined it over the phone call, too. It could be defined. So we've got, he said, hey, you know what? Go out. Whatever you go up. Go up 10 feet. Go out 10 feet. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if he said that. So using these boxes, it would be 
these equivalent boxes. It'd be like that. You got your equal sided triangle. All right, so these boxes are the same. One, two, three. The, the, the measurements between these two, all these, work out. I got that right. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, there's six boxes. It just looks like it's longer or shorter, right? So those, these two are the same legs, le same length. All right, so you go up 10, go out 10. This length, of course, is longer. And they did it. They did a long ass length, but they also used, he said, use four by four bracing. They used some damn pipe they found in the street. I have no idea where they got the piping from or how they got, how they got there with piping. So I end the video with this again. This is those tie system that gets you over those like this. See how that's staggered and this is a different joint up here. It starts tying it in. These are not cheap, right? They're pretty costly. You route it out, you clean it out, you mortar, so what's a mortar in there? You follow the manufacturer's instruction, then bed it again is what it typically states. Here is a version where uh where you use it also. You see the fracture? You tie those two together with that with that there. Now add a plane going um, um add a plumb is a different story altogether. It's falling away. You're gonna anchor back to the structure. You might use steel rods to go all the way through the structure and to the other side, you know, like uh, post tensioning. You're gotta grab grab back anchor back somewhere to hold the wall from going out. And you might need some serious Serious abutments, abutment plates. I mean, like, um, let's see if I can f find one for you. So this is how crazy it can look when you're working on it, when you're trying to get it temporarily. It can get as crazy looking as that. Now, this is what I'm talking about. The fire department all needs to get to get with the program and get systems like this going to secure these structures. While they do the investigation, while they um, work with the collapse. These things aren't cheap, but they're rector set style. They work fast. And um, this is what the technology they need to get with. Put some um, hydraulic load testing on this. Load uh, cells on it, and you'll be able to know if it's moving. And that's the end of this story. For now.